Welcome to a new video in which we will be having a quick look at the custom menu element. Now having a menu on your homepage is a great way for helping the visitors get around your website and easily access some important pages such as your contact us page, my profile page, your blog for example and many more. So let's jump right into this tutorial. If you want to look up the element in the right sidebar simply type in custom menu and it will show up right here. Now let's add it here at the top of my page and proceed with choosing a menu type. Now in a standard drop down menu, the second and the third level items are displayed in the standard drop down format. So just as you can see here, they are displayed one by one and not all at once. Whereas the simple mega menu has one large drop down in which the second and third level items are displayed all at once. Now this one is useful in more complex navigation structures, so if you need more details on how to build it, we do have a separate article in our knowledge base that you can check out. In this video, I'm gonna go with the standard drop-down menu and go through each option available for it. Okay, so after I've made my selection, I'll next have to choose the source of the menu that I want to build. And as you can see here, there are two separate options you can choose from. You can choose between creating a custom menu from scratch and you also have the option of using an already existing WordPress menu. So this is something that you have previously set up in the appearance section of your WordPress admin dashboard. However, even if you are going with the custom menu, you will still be able to load a WordPress menu from the left sidebar list of options and I'm going to show you how to do that. But for now, let's just go with creating a custom menu from scratch and then choose a template. So here you can simply browse this list or you can pick if you want to have the menu items stacked vertically or horizontally. So use these options if you want to filter by type. You can also change this at a later stage, so don't worry about this too much right now. Okay, so once the menu has been added to your page, you can proceed with using the left sidebar list of options. So right off the bat, you can go ahead and change the template that you've already chosen. So keep in mind though that if you have already customized your element and you've changed various details, they will be lost if you decide to change the template at the later stage. So this is something that's worth doing before you bring any changes to your custom menu. Next, you can choose between a horizontal or a vertical type of menu. Now, one of these two options, of course, will be selected by default depending on what kind of template you've chosen here. And as you can see, the options available for each of them are slightly different. That's why I'm going to go first through the options available for the horizontal type. And then later on, I'm going to select the vertical one as well and go through the additional list of options. Now with the help of this option, you can enable the hamburger toggle, which allows you to customize how the menu would be displayed on smaller screen sizes, such as tablets and mobile phones. So this is an option that comes in handy when working on the menu for smaller screen sizes. Now here as well, once you activate this toggle, several options will become available, such as the menu icon, icon color, icon size, and the menu state. So you can already see that this element is extremely versatile and can be customized down to the smaller details. So let me just quickly go through these four options that are available when this option is active. So you first have the menu icon that you can just browse and decide which one goes best with your website. Now let me just add some extra space here at the top so you can better see the menu items. All right, so back here in the main options, Besides the menu icons, you can also pick the icon color and then the icon size. And lastly, the menu state, whether it should be closed or open. Now I'll deactivate the hamburger view and proceed with explaining the options for the horizontal type. Here, use this drop-down list to load a different WordPress menu. So here, as you can see, I've already loaded an already existing menu from my website. And if you click here, you can be taken directly to the appearance section of your WordPress admin dashboard if you want to work on this WordPress menu and maybe change the menu items and the overall navigation structure. Next, from here, you can play with the main accent color of your menu. Simply click on the color field. And here, as you can see, you have the option of unlinking from the theme color and picking an entirely different shade or just going with the predefined color of your theme. Okay, so next from here, you can adjust the horizontal spacing, the vertical spacing and the spacing between the menu items. So just click on the type of spacing you would like to adjust and then use this slider until you find the right spacing. 
Now, just as his name says, this option allows you to split your menu with your logo. If you activate this option, your logo will be placed right here in the middle, so in the center of your custom menu. And of course, if you click on it, you will be able to access the logo options for it and make further adjustments. For the logo element, we have a separate article in our knowledge base that you might find useful if you want to find out how to use all these options. Now let's go back to the main options of the custom menu by clicking here in the breadcrumbs on the custom menu. And now let's see what are these options all about. So in the submenu options sections, you have the following feature. This first drop-down list allows you to change the icon of the menu item that will have a submenu. So I'm talking about this icon right here. So if you want, you can just go with the triangle one or the angle one. So just find the one that best suits your website. And then here you can pick between different animation styles. So this is the way the submenu will expand when hovered over. Lastly, this option is useful if one of your menu items, for example, is linked to the current page. So to the page on which your custom menu element is placed. So if you activate this option, the link to the current page will be disabled. This way, the users will not be able to click on a menu item that already takes them to the page they are currently on. So if this is your home page and you also have a home page menu item, then naturally clicking on it will not redirect the users to the same page they are currently on. So on the home page, then we have here the menu items. But I'm going to come back to this set of options after I will also show you the additional options that you can use when working with a vertical menu instead of horizontal one. So the options such as the toggle menu source colors and spacing can still be used here, just as in the case of the horizontal type. And I'm just going to go here through the options that are available for the vertical menu type. So you have here the content alignment, which basically allows you to decide the position of the content within the menu. And then you also have the menu alignment buttons that allow you to decide the position of the entire element within your page. Then you have the menu width, which is set by default to 600 pixels, but it can be changed using this slider. If, for example, the menu is moved or added to a more narrow container or sidebar, then the width will adjust to the size of that container. Then we have here the sub menu options. So depending on what you decide here, you can have the sub menu items expand to the left or to the right. And this is something that you have to decide based on how you want to build your page. And then these options are just the same as the ones described for the horizontal type. Okay, so when you are done customizing the way your menu looks, you can customize the items available within your actual menu. So this is where you can rearrange your menu items. You can add new ones if you want. You can delete or edit the already existing ones. And here is where you will also have to link your menu items to different parts of your website, depending on where you want to send the users clicking that menu item. So let me just quickly go through each of them and rename them. Okay, so I've customized my menu items and I want to show you something here. So for example, if you have a my profile type of menu item, then you can take advantage of this option that basically allows you to display this menu item based on whether the user is logged in or not. And then last but not least, besides all the customization that we've done so far, you also have the possibility of changing the style of the top level items as well as the drop down items. And you can do that simply by clicking on one menu item. You can see here in the breadcrumbs that I have the menu item selected. And then here in the currently styling section, you can choose which set of items you want to customize. So just as already mentioned, you either have the top level items or the drop downs. Now, as already explained in the previous minutes, this option allows you to show or hide a menu item depending on whether the user is logged in or not. And then here you can also select a hover effect. So when a visitor hovers over this menu item, there are various effects that can be applied to it. Then you have the item style. And then lastly, from here, you can choose how you want to display your menu items. So you can have a text only type of item as I have at the moment, but you can also choose icons instead, or maybe icons and text, and then doing further changes from here. This is entirely up to you. Now, a cool example in which you would want to use this option for your display is for those situations in which you want to add a my profile menu item that would dynamically display the image of the logged in user.
So I will quickly show you how you can do that. But if you want to read a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial, we have a separate article in our knowledge base that you can read. So first I'm making sure that I'm just working on these particular menu items so that my group styling feature is disabled, meaning that any change I apply will only be applied to this particular menu item. Then I can decide in which instances I want to display these menu items. And in this case, I just want to display it for the logged in users. And then I'm gonna click here on the image select the dynamic source and then pick the user image as my source. So this means that I now have a my profile menu item that dynamically shows the image of the logged in user. Now, of course, don't forget to also link this menu item to that page on your website that is specifically made for those users who want to access their profile page. Now, besides customizing the menu for the desktop view, which we did just now, it is also useful to customize how it would look like for tablets or for mobile views. So this can be easily accessed from here and they will show you how the page looks like on the device that you select from here. So this means that you can bring further changes to your element so that it will display OK on all types of screen sizes. Now, any change you make on the tablet mode will cascade down to the mobile view as well. However, the changes that you make on a smaller screen size will not be applied on bigger screen sizes. So it's better to work downwards from bigger screen sizes to smaller ones. Okay, now that was it for the custom menu element. As always, I hope you found this video useful and easy to follow.